Hey, what's up, folks? This is Junebug Obama, a.k.a. Junebug Unchained. I don't know if you all heard about this story or not, but this takes place in Brooklyn. It's about this female corrections officer. She's 29 years old. Her name is Nancy Gonzalez. And this sweet little angel, Miss Gonzalez, she has a sexual affair with one of the inmates in the detention center where she works. And then her ass turns around and gets pregnant by the inmate. And she was sneaking around and, and having sex with him in the cell. And also she took him to another area where they had sex repeatedly. And this is something that was being done on a consistent basis because he wanted to have a baby with her and she wanted to give him a baby. Since he was on death row, he wanted to have something to leave behind. OK, so the inmate that she was having sex with. His name is Ronnell Wilson. He's 30 years old and he is a convicted cop killer. He shot not one, but two officers in the head back in 2003. And here are some of the photographs of the two officers that he killed. And here's another photograph of uh, one of the wives of the two officers. She's crying because they were supposed to give this man who killed the officers, they were supposed to give him the death penalty for shooting these cops in the head, but they're trying to overturn it and say that he is mentally retarded and that the least he should spend life in prison, but that he shouldn't get the death penalty. Miss Gonzalez on her part, she didn't do a really good job of keeping this relationship a secret. They say at least three other inmates knew about the relationship and they went back and they told authorities that she was having inappropriate relationships. I guess they were mad because she wasn't giving him any because how often do inmates go and tell on other inmates? <laughs> I, I guess they were mad. It's like, oh, I can't get some. I can't get some. All right, bet. <laughs> I'm going to go tell on your ass. And Miss Gonzalez, her side of the story is she says, I took a chance because I was so vulnerable and I wanted to be loved. And now I am carrying his child. That's what she says. And now she's eight months pregnant. Boy, I tell you, love is something else. It's beautiful, isn't it? Now, here's a little twist to the story, which shouldn't be a big surprise because you already got an idea what type of woman this woman is. Turns out that she also had another sexual relationship with another inmate. She was talking on the phone about the relationship when they were doing their investigation on her and she slipped up and said the wrong things and she incriminated herself. And now she's facing up to 15 years in prison if she's convicted for this inappropriate relationship. Well, what do I think about this woman? Well, first of all, she knew she was jeopardizing her career. And facing prison time and she got caught by having sex with this inmate. So you would think that alone would make her stop and think, no, I can't do this. This is not worth my job. This is not worth going to jail. You would think that that's what common sense would have her do. Because after all, it's not like she can't find sex somewhere else. I know women get horny just like men do, but... There's other men out here that would have had sex with this woman. I mean, look at the pictures of this woman. I know some guys out there would have sex with this woman. But even if she was going to do it, let's say she bypassed all of what I just said. And she says, I don't care about the consequences here. I'm going to have sex with this man. I am this damn horny and he is so sexy that this is just so irresistible that I'm going to go ahead and sneak and have sex. Why would she allow a prison? This is a prison inmate inside of her with no damn condom. Now, this man has been locked up since 2003 and she's having unprotected sex with a prison inmate that's been locked up for what? Nine years, 10 years. I mean, she doesn't know what this man has been doing when she is not around, she don't know what he's doing or who he's doing or who's doing him. His ass could have dropped the soap or somebody else could have dropped the soap in front of his ass. OK, we don't know what's going on with that. But she allowed him to go in raw with no condom. There's no telling what kind of disease this man could have had or could have passed on to her. But obviously she didn't care. She wanted a baby to remember him by. 
even though the baby's going to be another baby growing up without a father and probably without a mother too. But that didn't matter. The baby's probably going to end up being adopted or something because her ass is definitely going to be going to jail for this. So it's not like she's going to be able to raise the baby in jail. And it's not like his ass is going to be able to raise the baby. So what kind of family is that? Okay, now I know a lot of men out there are listening to this and you may be thinking that this shit doesn't make any sense at all. She's not a bad looking lady. I know a lot of you all are saying, well, hell, I would have dated her. She wanted sex that bad. I would have had sex with her the first night with a condom, of course. She could have easily found another man to hit that. No problem. Right. And even if she wanted a thug, which obviously she's got a thing for thugs. Even if she wanted a thug, she didn't have to go with those thugs that are already locked up. There's plenty of thugs on the street who have not been locked up yet that she could have allowed to hit that. Right. So what's the logic behind all of this? Well, there's more than meets the eye. And and for those of you all who know a little bit about women and what makes some women tick sexually, it does make a little bit of sense. The reason I find this story so interesting and the reason I want to talk about it is that this story says a lot about women and what drives a lot of women sexually nowadays. And again, uh, let me make it clear. I'm not saying every single woman, but a lot of women love an element of danger and excitement. And there's a thrill when there's a risk of, of getting caught and I'm not just making this up. Uh, women, we already know women have a weakness for bad boys. But when you take the bad boy element and you combine a potential of getting caught doing something, I mean, getting caught overall by the powers that be and losing her job, that added some sexual uh, excitement for her, probably. And just having sex in the environment she was having sex in, that's another level of, of uh, excitement for a woman. There's so many different aspects to this. And I'm bringing this up because there's this book called Why Women Have Sex. And it's by David Buss. Uh, he's a doctor, uh, a, a psychologist. Actually, he's one of the leading authorities on evolutionary psychology. And our mating choices, he's really studied that from prehistoric times up to now. Again, his name is David Buss, B-U-S-S, -S, David Buss, Ph.D. I bought the book a few years back and I've been looking for the book today and I cannot find the book to save my life. But the book really delves deep into the psychology of what turns women on sexually. And this story is a great example of some of the things they were talking about in the book. Now we know that there's a lot of women who fantasize about these type of things. Doesn't mean they're going to actually act on it in real life, but with this culture, the thug culture, they become a victim to media propaganda because this thug thing is being promoted and pushed as something that's sexually appealing or should be sexually appealing to a woman. And it wasn't always like this. If we go back a few years and we look at um, some of the, the imagery that was put out by the media and by the uh, entertainment industry and by the recording industry. If you go back to the 80s, for example, there was a time when they were promoting a more androgynous look. The men who were sex symbols were men who damn near look effeminate. You look at Michael Jackson, you look at Prince, you look at George Michael and Boy George. You look at this group, Duran Duran, they all wore makeup and eyeshadow and they had long hair like a woman and sometimes even lipstick. And women were in love with these type of men. And they had that look. They look like women. They act like women. They didn't have a lot of bass in the voice in some uh, uh, um, instances. But that's that's what was promoted by the media and the entertainment industry. And women fell for it. Women were into those type of guys. Then we shift gears to the 90s. And now and N.W.A. and Ice-T and, and 50 Cent and these different groups, of course, 
all throughout the last several 10 to 20 years have changed everything. And now we look at a criminal for being the archetype for sexual attractiveness for women and women fall for it hook, line and sinker. And that's what they want to go after. They have these thug fantasies. And it's not just the recording industry. It's not just the movies. It's also uh, in books. A lot of women read these uh, novels. But last year, I came across a subcategory of novels that I didn't even I wasn't even aware existed. And these novels have a thug theme to them. And I know some of the women out there, especially black women, know what I'm talking about. There's this author that I came across called Wahida Clark. And they already have this category called street literature. But the street literature has subcategories like they have um, uh, like they have erotica. Of course, that's like sexual books. But they also have these thug sex books for women. They have these books and titles. The word thug is always in the title. It's like justify my thug and thug passion and thug this and thug that. Something having to do with a storyline where a woman falls in love with a thug, some type of criminal. And they have the sex scenes in there and everything. And women fantasize about having some thug sex with uh, one of these dudes. And, and it's one thing to have a fantasy. You can actually do some role playing in the bedroom and live out your fantasy without actually doing it in real life. Like this stupid ass prison guard who had sex with her with the inmate. She could have had a man dress up like a damn thug <laughs> and, and pretend to be a, a inmate and have sex that way. But her dumb ass wanted to do it in real life. You know, some sexual fantasies are best left as fantasies. And I'm not one of these guys who bitches and whines and complains about women being with thugs. I really don't care. I've had my share of women without having to be a thug. So I don't really have a problem with women being a thug, being with a thug if that's what they like. But it's just the issue of doing something stupid where you're going to have to serve 15 years in prison. That's stupid. But for all you women out there who do have a fetish for thugs, I'm going to hook you all up. I'm going to direct you to my new website. It's called the June Bug Obama Thug Inmate Dating Service for Women Who Love Thugs.com. That's right, ladies. For $500, I can hook you up with the prison inmate of your dreams. We have profiles of all types of criminals for your viewing pleasure. And for an additional fee, I can even set it up where you can go into the stanky ass cell where this prison inmate lives and you can let him hit it raw all night long for an additional fee, of course. And I got all kinds of criminals. Just let me know what type of crime turns you on. I got rapists. I got murderers. I got axe murderers. I even got a dude who kicked an old lady down the flight of stairs for a welfare check. You'll love him. Armed robbers, child molesters. I don't know, just all types of violent individuals. So just let me know what you like and I'll hook it up. No problem at all. So don't act like I'm being ridiculous now. There are some dating services for women who want to get with inmates. So don't act like it doesn't exist. Just do a Google search. I'm just trying to get in on some of that money myself. That's all I'm trying to do. Anyway, everybody take care of yourself and I will talk to you later. Peace.